Hey guys, Luke here, and how good is it having the footy back? Now, I've got to admit, I didn't watch every game with the, I was going to say the Auckland Nines. It's not the Auckland Nines. Every single time I bring up the Nines, I say Auckland Nines. The Perth Nines is what I meant to say. But I, got, I didn't watch every single game. I did watch the highlights, though. Shout out to the dude who was uploading uh, all of the game highlights on YouTube. Uh, weird scheduling, Friday night, Saturday during the day. I mean, it was Valentine's Day. It, it seemed very weird to me. However, I suppose they got to do what they got to do. But yeah, the whole Friday night, um, especially if they didn't play all the teams in their pools, I thought that was very, very strange. However, overall, I think it was a pretty good tournament. We got to see a lot of youngsters, uh, a lot of teams who, you know, shocked people in good and bad ways. Um, I mean, Rabbitohs were a bit eh. But I mean, the Bulldogs, they got to win. They beat the Eels, who were probably my favourites going into it. The Eels obviously didn't do that well. I mean, maybe a little bit unlucky. Probably not. Uh, it was very, very nice seeing Mitchell Moses uh, having a sook on the ground. Uh, he's well-renowned as having, having tantrums, Mitchell Moses. And uh, the Nines was no different. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the actual tournament as a whole, very, very good quality of football was quite good. A lot of nice tries scored. I'm sure you can... You know, make a lot of um, montage-worthy tries there. Put together a good highlights package. Uh, defense wasn't exactly the best, but there were a few big hits. Uh, a big talking point was, uh, I think his name's Cody Ramsey. Uh, he scored in the corner to win the game. Uh, I can't remember who were they were playing. Dragons up against Panthers, that was it. Panthers actually had a pretty good tournament. Robbed, I think. Um, final second, literally the last play of the game. Uh, the ball goes out. Well, he goes for the put-down, spectacular put-down. Also, I thought the one earlier was a bit questionable. We kind of, like, slammed the ball down. Uh, I'm not happy to give that one, but uh, that one was... The, the last one was definitely out. So, Panthers definitely robbed in that case. But I thought it was quite interesting that throughout the past few years, everyone's talked about how uh, the bunkers bad, video refs are bad, including myself. But... A lot of people have said, we need to get rid of the bunk up. We need to get rid of video ref and just let the referees make the call on the fly. And I've always been against that because I always figured, you know, if you've got the technology available, use it. And when circumstances like this happen, where there is a howler, everybody blows up. Everyone loses their mind. How can the referees miss it? Look, it happens so bloody fast. We only saw it because uh, slow motion and that. And everyone's blowing up the referees going, oh, well, look, look another howler. Referees are shit, this and that. But... I mean, they're, they're the same ones who are calling for the video ref, going, uh, let's get rid of the video ref, let the, let the refs make a decision on the field. And then they want to blow up when the referees get a decision wrong. It's just human error. It's going to happen. Anyways, enough talking about the referees. I'm sure we're going to be talking about them throughout the rest of the regular season. Now, I did mention the Ramsey guy. He was very, very good. I had no idea who he was. Apparently, he was the Dragons under-20s player of the year. Something along the lines of that. It's... You don't really see too much of the under-20s considering it's not televised anymore, but apparently he's pretty good. Well, we saw it. He is very, very good. Uh, the real standout, though, of the whole tournament was Scott Drinkwater. We all know he's a great talent. Obviously, he was highly talented at the Storm. Uh, ended up leaving to go try and get an opportunity considering they had Jerome Hughes, they had Puppenhausen, who were ahead of him on the pecking order. But at the start of the season, the start of 2019, he was he was first in line. He was going to be the fullback before he had a pretty bad injury. So Storm definitely rated him. I remember years ago when he was in the halves, um, I think he signed from, I'm going to say the Sharks maybe. Whoever he signed from, I remember there being uh, a lot of um, hype about him. So I remember hearing the Drinkwater name and I remember there was a Josh Drinkwater. I don't know if they're brothers or not, but um, I went, oh, well, hopefully he's better than him. And it turns out, looks like he is. Now, look, he, he fit the Nines format perfectly. Doesn't necessarily translate to the 13 side of game. That's why I looked at the Cowboys and the Dragons lineup. Obviously, they both made the grand final. You can go back and look at my analysis of the squads. I was pretty spot on with most of them. Um, and I, I said the Cowboys and the Dragons had very good squads that suit the Nines. Now, you look at the, the Cowboys squad. I mean, Tom Lale is very good. Kyle felt an absolute standout in the Nines every year. Um, and then they had a lot of quick nippy guys. And that's same can be said for the Dragons. Dragons didn't necessarily have the star power. But they had lots of youngsters, like your Tristan Taylors and that, uh, and that Ramsey guy, who were quite nippy, quite quick, and there's not that much defense in the nine, so it kind of fit them to a T. You and Aiken, Matt Dufty, all those guys, they did what you want in the nines. Um, but yeah, what can I say? I mean, like I said, the scheduling wasn't great. However, the tournament as a whole, very, very good. Whether it's going to be in Perth next year, we'll have to wait and see. I'm pretty sure they're doing it next year. I just, It's something that I feel like the nines, it's very good. However... It's not must-watch. Now, it's really good. It breaks the drought of football. Obviously, I'm very excited to see it happen. And in the lead-up, I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's watch it. 
It is very long, though. It's a very, very long day to watch football. I was there for the World Cup nines, and being in attendance, actually being there, was very, very good. However, watching on TV, it's a bit like, mm, especially considering I didn't watch it live. Uh, I was busy. I was at work. I couldn't watch it live. And when I was watching the replays, I didn't even know who won at this point, because um, I tried to avoid spoilers. But um, I was just watching it, and I'm like, shit, this is, this is a long time. And that, I was able to skip through um, the games, and um, there wasn't too much downtime. I was able to skip through things if it was a bit boring. But, yeah, it was long, and I just eventually went, you know what, highlights it is. There's, there's too many games. And that wasn't even um, playing every team in, in their pool. So, yeah, uh, maybe for Shot Live would have been a bit different. And I didn't have to avoid going on my phone and stuff. And I could have just stuffed around in the background, had it on. But, uh, yeah, there's just that, not that must-watch. Um, which I feel like they definitely need to find a way to gather the interest. Because I feel like everybody uh, sees it as a bit of a sideshow. Which it is. It is a sideshow. But everyone sees it and says, yeah, it's alright. We can chuck it on for, for a little bit. But nobody's glued to the TV. Nobody's super intrigued about it. No one really cares at the end of the day if their team wins it or not. Or maybe I'm just saying that because I'm a Bulldogs fan. Because I don't expect them every year. Year after year we feel it a pretty... Uh, average side that doesn't really do too much so I don't go into the into the competition with too much hope but I think even your Cowboys and your Dragons and um, all those ones I mean teams like the Titans who actually did pretty well who haven't had too much success in the 13 side I saw their fans were really into it but it's not something that if your team loses you're like oh shit that would have been good to win you're like eh, well nobody got hurt so yeah I think the NRL definitely needs to find a way to get people more invested in it whether it'll happen who knows but um, I don't know, maybe every second year they can do it, um, and switch things up a little bit, but, um, yeah, overall, it was a good tournament, the quality of football was good, lots of entertaining tries, like exactly what you want, and, uh, we got to see a glimpse at a lot of future stars, I would think, also, it was cool to see some of the legends, I thought Nightingale was quite good, um, it was cool to see Andrew Ryan run around a little bit, Corey Parker, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else, I'm sure there are some other people, um, that I just can't think of top of my head, but it was very cool to see them running around, um, a lot of them looked like they could still go. Uh, Nightingale looked like he didn't miss a beat. Uh, oh, Kirk Gidley was another one who did quite well. Uh, would have been nice to have seen a few more stars. And I mean, guys like Callum Ponga didn't play, but Sean Johnson did. He was a little bit quiet. But um, I mean, that's, that's just how it is. I mean, Callum Ponga played in the World Cup nines, and I thought he was pretty shit out, to be honest. So um, there's no guarantees they would absolutely tear up the nines or anything. But uh, yeah, congratulations to the Cowboys. I don't know how complimentary I've been of the actual tournament. I'm trying to be fairly complimentary because it is a good tournament. Cowboys absolutely outstanding. Um, you watch the final, you can see they just suit the Nines to a T. And uh, the Dragons, they did put up a fight. If that Saab fella um, didn't get his pants pulled down and uh, not, not like put his pants, like literally got his pants pulled down trying to score the try. Who knows um, if if that would have changed things. It was right before half time. So uh, whoever made that tackle, great effort. You might have just won the game. Uh, a lot of the talk is about the attack, and like I said, defense isn't too important in the nines, but that was a big defensive play, uh, display. Um, in terms of the Panthers, they make a big de defensive display in terms of um, making the try-saving tackle, and they still award it. So unlucky to Panthers. They probably deserve to go through. Uh, maybe they would have won it. Maybe they wouldn't have. Kick-out was absolutely killing it, so it would have been cool to see him um, play a few more games. But overall, Cowboys, definitely the best team. Um, like I said, drink water. Go and look at his um, highlights. He was he was phenomenal uh, in terms of kicking it, attack. Just everything in attack was was outstanding. Then all the other youngsters were quite good as well. So, um, yeah, that was just my quick little thoughts on the nines. Like I said, I didn't watch every game. I just watched a lot of the highlights. So I can't give like a full in-depth uh, look at the nines or give a full-on um, opinion, I guess, but I just wanted to talk about the nines, give my little opinion, give my two cents, so there you go, leave in the comment section below, what did you think of the nines, did you enjoy it, how did your team go, were you disappointed, were you super happy how your team went, Titans fans, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you're pretty happy, uh, I said they'd be the dark horses, and they did quite well, so there you go, there's a team who definitely benefited from the nines, probably go into the season with a little bit more confidence than what they would have if the nines didn't exist, but uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to end the video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT. 
My Facebook page is also in the description below as well. It's just Mr. Luke. Search it up. Should be able to find it. Also, add me on Snapchat, Mr. Luke and YT. Been posting on there a fair bit. See me post a little bit of shit, a little bit about football, a little bit about life. You never know what I'm going to be posting. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to end the video. Stay tuned on the channel. I'm going to be posting a lot more during the NRL season. It's a peak time to upload, so I better get me uploads ready. Uh, better get on that NRL grind. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.